Is vitamin C truly the holy grail ingredient? Is it a miracle that our skin needs every single day? This is a question we're gonna be answering together. So nerds, get your asses out of bed, get your pens and papers ready because we're gonna dive in deep today. Who the hell am I? I'm Dr. Shereen Idris, a board certified dermatologist based in New York City. Welcome to my YouTube channel. We do this every Saturday at 10 a.m. It is known as Pillow Talk Derm. So without further ado, let's jump in. To the why. We're gonna first answer why do we need vitamin C? We're gonna then say who can benefit from vitamin C, and then we're gonna jump into the what's of vitamin C because vitamin C is not created equal across the board. She's not as simple as it seems. She's actually quite complex because vitamin C is an umbrella term. Why do we need vitamin C? There are four main benefits when you think of vitamin C. Number one, she is a potent antioxidant. She's gonna help protect our skin from free radical damage. Free radicals form because of environmental stressors. Your life, the day, pollution, toxin buildup, emotional distress, you name it, free radicals form in our skin, causing our skin to break down and age faster. But vitamin C helps protect our skin. She's the little fighter in our skin that protects our skin against that formation. Number two, vitamin C boosts the effects of our sunscreen. Nope, she's not gonna replace your sunscreen. She doesn't offer any sort of sun protective value or factor, SPF, but she does help increase the time that it takes for our skin to turn red under the sun. So she's gonna help boost our sunscreen's effects and by being an antioxidant, helps to neutralize the effects of both UVA and UVB. Number three, vitamin C is a collagen builder. She is a crucial element needed to make collagen because she is a cofactor for enzymes like prolohydroxylase and lysohydroxylase, both that are required in order to produce collagen. So if you had to pick between spending your money on a vitamin C or ingesting collagen, I would take a vitamin C over ingesting collagen all day, every day. Vitamin C, Number four, works wonders for pigmentation. Is she the end all be all only ingredient that you need for discoloration, hyperpigmentation, melasma, etc.? No, she is not. But is she a necessity that you probably should have in your skincare routine if you have an uneven skin tone? Yes, because in conjunction with a bunch of other ingredients, she works beautifully. So who can benefit from vitamin C then? Honestly, anyone and everyone, because vitamin C is a crucial ingredient that our skin needs. But not all vitamin Cs are for everyone. And you have to understand the type of vitamin C, your skin's biggest issue, how your skin reacts in order to know how to navigate this world. So let's jump into the different forms of vitamin C. I will be linking below various products that apply to the different forms of vitamin C. I'm not gonna be talking about each product individually at all in this video. I want you guys to have an understanding of the framework of vitamin C, and then you can decide how you wanna proceed. And if you want me to do videos about the different products below, let me know in the comment section. There are two main forms of vitamin C the active form and the inactive form. Within the inactive form, there are two subtypes, which we will talk about. So that is sort of the lay of the land. The active form of vitamin C is known as L-ascorbic acid. When you apply it to your skin, it's already active and going straight to work, which sounds lovely, right? But L-ascorbic acid is not lovely for everyone because she is highly, highly irritating. That's probably one of the biggest drawbacks that I hear when it comes to people using vitamin C is that their skin gets very irritated with it. And I'm not surprised because l ascorbic acid is very acidic. And most people who have sensitive skin or a broken skin barrier or inflamed skin cannot tolerate l ascorbic acid. The sweet spot for this type of ingredient is five to 20%. When you see active vitamin C at 30%, you do not need it. It's overkill. There is too much of a good thing. That is actually a fact. And anything higher than that can be just super irritating. So if you're sensitive and you just want to use L-ascorbic acid, the active form of vitamin C, and you're trying your best but you're not able to, go for something towards the 5% range. Lower is better. Why? Because it's not going to induce inflammation and having less inflammation over time is going to be better for your skin. The other red flag with this form of vitamin C is that she's highly unstable. She's a crazy bitch, meaning once she's exposed to oxygen, air, and light, 
she breaks down. And so when you buy this form of vitamin C, you really want to work your way through it pretty fast because you don't want it sitting on your bathroom vanity for months on end because she'll probably turn dark orange and in the process, not work. And number three, it will stain. And quite frankly, she stinks. She smells like hot dogs. And you will notice that your skin has a little bit of a yellowish hue to it. Um, it happens and it comes with the territory. So then who is this vitamin C good for? Normal, quote unquote, skin. I would say if you're somebody who's, you know, even stable, even skin wise, not mentally too, but no, I'm not talking about skin tone. I'm talking about like, if your skin is more like stable, not reactive, etc. I will use this one. But if you have oily or acne prone skin, I would probably avoid it. It can be irritating and you don't want to make your inflammation on your skin worse. If you have sensitive skin, this is not my first choice for you. And if you have combination skin, I would also be a little bit wary of this particular form of vitamin C because like I said, it can be irritating. And if you have combination skin, you might be on the spectrum of having acne. Be careful using this ingredient in combination with the retinol, not because it deactivates it, deactivates it but because it can be irritating. Now let's jump into the inactive forms of vitamin C. There are two subtypes within the inactive forms of vitamin C. You have the ester forms of vitamin C and the non-ester forms. Within the ester forms of vitamin C, we have number one, ascorbyl palmitate. This one is the ester of L-ascorbic and palmitic acids. It is similar to ascorbic acid in terms of stability, so she's also a crazy bitch, but how does it compare then to ascorbic acid? It's less potent, but it still provides some antioxidant benefits, so something is better than nothing. And the best thing about this is that it is good for people with dry skin. It has moisturizing properties. So it's not completely useless in a world of vitamin Cs. If you have very, very dry skin and you're trying to get a two-in-one, this is the form for you. But it is not so worth it, in my opinion, unless you combine it with other forms. Number two, ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, A-T-I-P. This is good for sensitive skin and beginners. It is also the ester form of ascorbic acid. It is highly stable compared to the active form and it is oil soluble. It offers antioxidant benefits, it can brighten your skin and it can also help stimulate collagen production. And it's good for, like I said, beginners, people with sensitive skin. Because it is stable, we know it's going to do its thing, but it's not as potent. Number three. This is my favorite form in the ester form of vitamin Cs. It is tetrahexyl desyl ascorbate. I absolutely love this form of vitamin C. It is lipid soluble and it is my personal favorite because she's extremely stable. She has shown great penetration, even better than ascorbic acid. Because it is oil soluble, its skin penetration ability seems to be great and it has been shown to maybe even surpass that of active vitamin C. And once it is in your skin, it converts to the active form of vitamin C. It is good for most skin types, quite honestly, unless you have an allergic reaction to it. And it is specifically great for people with sensitive skin or have reactive skin. So this is the one that I would honestly start with if you are looking for the ester forms of vitamin C. When you're talking about the non-ester forms of vitamin C, there are several. Sodium ascorbyl phosphate also known as SAP. It is a sodium salt of, ascorbo ac of ascorbic acids ester. This one has a very, very good stability, but it doesn't penetrate the skin as well as ascorbic acid. So how well it's going to work in your skin is left for debate. But it is good for people with oily and acne prone skin. And between one and 5%, it has been shown to suppress P. acnes in your skin. The bacteria that is, that is basically responsible for acne breakouts um, and how much sebum we make. So if you're very, very oily, if you're very, very acne prone, but you're not necessarily sensitive, this one is a good one for you. Number two, we have magnesium ascorbyl phosphate, also known as MAP. This one is pretty much good for brightening, all right? It is a poorly absorbed non-ester form of vitamin C compared to ascorbic acid. It doesn't have the strongest antioxidant properties, but it is good for potentially brightening your skin. However, 
alone, it's not one that I would reach out for. I think we have better alternatives. It's not necessarily the best non-ester form of vitamin C, but if you just want to try to brighten, throwing it in there in combination with other forms of vitamin C and other actives is a must. On its own, I would not go for it. Number three, ascorbyl glucoside. This is a derivative of ascorbic acid combined with glucose. It is very, very stable. It has good absorption into your skin. And like all other inactive forms of vitamin C, it converts to the active form in the skin. So this one is probably one that I would tell you is a solid choice if you're looking for a non-ester form of vitamin C. And it's good for beginners. Number four, ethyl ascorbic acid, also known as 3-O-ethyl ascorbate, E-A-C. I like this particular form of vitamin C for those of you who have a lot of redness in your skin. It is the etherified derivative of ascorbic acid that consists of vitamin C and the ethyl group bound to the third carbon position. That's a lot of chemistry for a lot of you guys, and even me, who are not cosmetic chemists, but know that it is very stable and soluble in both water and oil. It is better than ascorbyl glucoside, which we just mentioned, and it converts like the rest into the active form underneath once it gets absorbed into the skin. The reason I like this for people with redness is that it has anti-inflammatory benefits. So if you are somebody who has a lot of redness, a broken skin barrier, and you want to incorporate a vitamin C, this is one that might be worth trying because it can help minimize the redness in the process. I hope this video was helpful. I tried to keep it clear and concise. Now you guys understand that there are two branches of vitamin C. There are the actives, the inactives, and within the inactives, there are two sub-branches in there as well. I will lay out some products below that fall within each category, but if you guys want to know more about each particular product that I'll be linking below, let me know in the comment section, and I hope this helped clarify whether or not vitamin C is the holy grail for you. Thank you, and have a beautiful Saturday.